So uh, when I first got invited to give this talk, one of the first things I did is I started researching the other speakers that are here at TEDx. And I found out lots of information about the people here today, and they're all amazing, really accomplished people with successful careers. And then there's me. Um, I am a 24-year-old American woman living in Albania and working practically for free. And so I'm going to share with you today what I know, which is being a 24-year-old American woman living in Albania. And I'm going to try to share with you um, something from my field of expertise, which is integrating into a new culture. Now, I've been a volunteer English teacher in a town in central Albania, working with a humanitarian agency for just over a year now. And every time I meet somebody new, whether it's in my own community or in another part of Albania, they tend to ask me the same questions over and over. And the most common question I get from people is, what are you doing in Albania? And there's a simple answer to this question, which is, of course, I'm here to teach English, I'm here to learn a new language and learn about a new culture. But there's also a more complicated and more important answer to this question as well. So a few months ago, uh, I watched a video clip from the show Saturday Night Live. And there was a sketch featuring Tina Fey, who's one of my favorite comedians ever. And she was making fun of the show Girls on HBO, which is an American show. And in this sketch, they actually mention Albania. And it got a lot of my friends really excited because they know that I live here now and that I would appreciate it. Uh, the, 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 the show is really funny. The sketch is, is really brilliantly written. Um, but I know that if I was still in America, I would laugh hysterically after I saw this sketch. But as I was sitting in my flat, in Albania, and the video ended, um, I just felt kind of funny, and I wasn't laughing. And so I started thinking about why that's the case. What had changed from the time that I was living in America to the time that I moved here to Albania? So when I first moved here, uh, I, took, I packed three bags with all of my possessions and moved in with an Albanian host family in eastern Albania that spoke absolutely no English. And if this sounds like a stressful situation to you, you are absolutely right. It was completely overwhelming, and I went through what experts refer to as culture shock because all the background information I had to rely on in my own culture was now gone, and I had to start learning from scratch. And it was a very stressful experience. One of the things that I had to get used to in Albania that I'm still adapting to is traveling here. And so if you don't have a car of your own, or if you don't have a family member that has a car, then you use public transportation, which can get really interesting. And as you know, in Albania, we have furgons. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know what a furgon is, who might be watching this, uh, in America, our parents always told us when we were children, don't get into a car with strangers. It's not safe. Because there's always some story on the news about how a little boy or a little girl got kidnapped because a stranger offered them candy. And I don't know why this is, maybe it's just a stereotype, but all of these incidents are said to occur in big vans. Uh, so if you take these two concepts and put them together, you get a furgon, which is a big van full of strangers. Everything your mother told you to avoid as a child. Now, when I first started riding in furgons, I was terrified, and for good reason. The drivers like to go really fast, they don't drive very safely, uh, they like to pack as many passengers as possible into the van, and so people are standing in aisles, they're sitting on each other's laps. And if there's somebody inside the furgon who maybe didn't take a shower that morning or <laughs> forgot to brush his teeth, then everybody shares in that sensory experience. But beyond just that, I would argue that as an American, I was raised in a culture of fear. And I mentioned earlier that from the time that we're very young, we are taught to be afraid of strangers, that they can't be trusted, and that people we don't know yet are dangerous. And of course, things like murders and kidnappings and other types of crimes, they happen everywhere in every country all over the world. But the media in America tends to glamorize and sensationalize these things, and so they seem like a bigger threat than they actually are. And there's data and statistics that prove this. Um, so, one of the things I realized that changed when I came to Albania is that 
When I lived in America, I had my own car, and so I could drive myself wherever I needed to go, and I didn't have to interact with other people. And so this is a very uh, stark difference. Now, to find transportation in Albania, you go out to the street or the road or the highway, and what do you do? You stick it good. You stick your hand out in the direction that you want to go. And then somebody will stop for you, you'll get inside, and they'll take you to your destination. And it's not always as simple as that, but it happens, and eventually you get to where you need to be. We have a word for this in American English, and this phrase is called hitchhiking. And the phrase hitchhiking is most commonly associated with the phrase axe murderer. <laughs> and so traveling like this is really almost second nature to me now. It seems normal. It's not something that I'm usually afraid of anymore. But when I describe the way that I get around to my American friends and family, they lose their mind. They think it's terrible, and they're really concerned for my safety. And so this isn't to say that I haven't had a few very unpleasant experiences on Fergons, but I think that's a topic for a different talk. Today I want to emphasize um, the vast majority of really eye-opening experiences I've had traveling here because it's allowed me to be in such close proximity with other Albanians. And again, I wouldn't have had these types of opportunities if I traveled the way that I did in America, which is isolated from everyone else. Uh, I'm lucky because Albanians are very friendly people, and they're very curious people too, and so more often than not, when I'm sitting on a furgon, I end up having a conversation with the person next to me. And they can usually pick up on the fact that I'm foreign. I speak Albanian, but not very well, and definitely not even as close to somebody who's a native speaker. And so they start asking me these same questions again. Who are you? Where are you from? Why have you come to Albania? Etc. And because of these interactions I've had with people, I've been offered sticks of gum, coffee invitations, dinner invitations, job offers, Facebook friend requests, marriage proposals, just jokes, I hope, hopefully. <laughs> All because of my ability to interact closely with Albanians. And some Albanians I talk to, they don't like this, this bothers them. But for somebody like me who's new in the country, it's helped me feel very welcomed. It's helped me feel very embraced. And so these fears that I originally have are now, are now gone to some extent because of the times that Albanians have reached out to me and have helped me and made me feel welcome and tried to befriend me. Now, of course, I've also met some smelly people, some rude people, some creepy people on Fergons. But eventually I realized that the amount of bad and good people that I've interacted with in Albania is the same amount of bad and good people that I interacted with in America, and that good people can be found everywhere in the world. And so there's no reason for me to be afraid. And there's, some, there's certain things, of course, that I can do to protect myself, but beyond just this, I also came to the conclusion that most people are good, and most people just want to help. And I don't know how long it would have taken me, if at all, to come to this conclusion if I had never left my own culture, if I had never broken out and had this type of an experience. So it was at this point that I realized that, sure, the simple answer for me being in Albania is to teach English and to teach and to give other people the knowledge that I have. But way more important is the knowledge that other people are giving me, and not just about the language or the culture, but this is really the only time in my life that I've been removed from everything that I know. And this is the only way that I've been able to reflect back on my own culture and learn things that I wouldn't have learned in any other way. Now, moving on, the second most common question that Albanians ask me when they first meet me is, are you married? Are you engaged? Do you have a boyfriend? Do you want an Albanian boyfriend? Because you should meet my nephew. He's perfect for you. <laughs> so I mentioned earlier that I lived with a host family when I first came to Albania. And during this time, I was taking courses in the Albanian language. I was learning how to become a better English teacher. Uh, and I had class about five or six days a week. And after these classes, the other American volunteers and I would go out into town and have coffees at cafes. 
And there, we met a group of boys, and they were fun to hang out with and drink coffee with, and we would have short, difficult conversations in what I like to call shiplish, which is half Albanian, half English mixed together, often with the assistance of Google Translate, which made things even more confusing. <laughs> Now, there was one boy, we'll call him Aldi, uh, who made his intentions clear to me one night as we were going to dinner, And he stayed behind everyone else and walked with me. And every time we made eye contact, he would wink. <laughs> like this. And as we were walking down the road, to our right, there was a wedding dress shop. And I've seen these shops in every village, town, and city in Albania. And they're all stuffed to the brim with these huge, white, beautiful, elaborate white wedding dresses. And so Aldi stopped me at this dress shop, and pointing in the window, he said, which one do you like? The next day, my friends and I met Aldi and his friends for a coffee, and I noticed as they approached us that he was holding something behind his back. And as he approached me, he revealed a single red rose and gave it to me. And I did the only thing I could think to do, which was say thank you and accept it. Now, all this occurred uh, within the time of a week, and unfortunately, my time in town was drawing to a close. I had to get ready to move to my permanent site in central Albania. And I was really busy at this time taking my exams, finishing up my work, packing up my things, and so I missed a few goodbyes along the way. And unfortunately, one of those was Aldi. Poor guy. Uh, I got a Facebook message from him uh, a few days later, after he learned that I had to leave. And it read, Katarina, why didn't you say goodbye? Please don't leave me. I love you, I love you, I love you. Now, all these interactions I had with Aldi were really surprising to me as an American. And, and of course, I can only speak for myself, but I'd say that a lot of American women are not used to being pursued this way. Um, And, of course, I had to remember during all of these interactions that Aldi is from a culture where the family unit is the foundation of society, from what I've observed here. And so things like love and marriage are really important to a lot of Albanians, and they place a lot of emphasis on these relationships. Uh, and, of course, this is a situation where I've also been able to have the chance to reflect back on what I know about my own culture and use this experience as kind of a mirror to reflect what I see in my homeland. And in America, uh, our relationships are, are different than the way that Albanians have their relationships. And I noticed that these two cultures are on two uh, different ends of the spectrum when it comes to the culture of love. There are two extremes here. And in America, with, with my generation of young Americans, uh, we generally tend to be more hesitant. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So my generation of young Americans is um, hesitant and even afraid of concepts like marriage and, and romantic commitments and these things. And there's a reason for this, and I think it's a good reason. Fifth, we live in a country where 50% There's a 50% divorce rate, and so half of marriages fail. And every time you look at the news, there's always a, a headline about a celebrity breakup. And so this can be kind of intimidating, and I understand why, but it's also affected our relationships in a negative way. Uh, a friend of mine actually put this really well the other day, and she said that the person who cares the least in the relationship ends up having the most power. And, you know, I do agree with this assessment to a certain extent with the culture of young Americans right now. And uh, we're taught to play hard to get, which means that we try, to we try to hide our true feelings to avoid being vulnerable, to avoid, you know, being hurt by somebody. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so some of you agree with this too, I guess. Um, and... We hide our feelings, you know, we try to seem aloof, we try to seem guarded so that uh, we don't end up coming off as too desperate and, you know, God forbid if we show that we like somebody too much. And so as I'm looking back on these things and, and the way that I used to be and the way that I used to do things when I was at university in America, I really just feel kind of sad. 
Uh, and so I'm looking at this point for something that's maybe in between these two extremes. Um, and you won't see me in a big old Albanian wedding dress anytime soon. And sorry, Aldi, but I don't think it's possible to fall in love with somebody you've known for less than a week. But these experiences have proven to me that for as crazy as my life gets in Albania, sometimes in America, it's just as crazy, if not even more crazy. So now, the third and final most common question I get from Albanians that I first meet is, which is better, Albania or America? And you might be surprised how often I get this question, but people really want to know. Unfortunately, there's no way I can answer this question correctly, because if I say that Albania is better, then the person I'm talking to says, no, of course America is better. In Albania, we're poor, we have so many problems, we have corruption. America, you are rich, you are powerful. America, number one. But if I say that America's better, then whoever I'm talking to puffs out their chest and says, oh, but people in America are so cold. Albanians are much friendlier. We have strong culture, we have strong tradition. The Albanian language is beautiful and unique. Did you know that Mother Teresa is Albanian? <laughs> but the biggest problem with this question is that both of these answers are wrong. When I talk about my homeland, which is America, and my new home, which is Albania, I don't use words like good or bad or better or worse, because when at first I came here and all I could see were the striking differences between these two countries, once I took the time to get to know all the wonderful things about living here, I fell in love. It took me longer than a week, but it happened. And now that it has, I feel like no matter what, Albania will always be a part of me. So this is why, after I watched the video about Tina Fey, Tina Fey playing Blerta in this show, I wasn't laughing. And the reason for this is, while I know that, of course, uh, she and the other writers weren't trying to hurt anybody or offend everybody with this, uh, it bothered me first that they had chosen to make this character from Albania, which is a small, poor, ex-communist country that a lot of Americans don't know a lot about. And secondly, it bothered me that they chose to make this person like Blerta, when I've met so many kind and hardworking and wonderful people here. Why didn't they make her like any of the people that I've grown to love in Albania? And so it was at this moment that I realized that more than just an American, and more than just an American person becoming a little Albanian, I'm slowly in the process, hopefully, of becoming more of a citizen of the world than a citizen of any one country, or any two countries for that matter. And so I hope that by sharing these types of experiences with each other, we can all attempt to do this. I've been given the opportunity to leave my home country and be able to see everything that I knew in a different light and be able to break things down and really evaluate the decisions I make and the way that I am. And not everyone gets this opportunity. And so I'm really thankful to Albania and to the Albanians I've met for helping me with this. Um, and I'd like to close at this time by saying, Unyam Shumir Nyohas Perkat Opportunitet, Ada Unyam Krenare Tiyam Nashipri. Mirsayo Jetta.